what's up you guys so i was having a bible study with somebody earlier today right and i was reading from genesis i was like i asked him like hey like have you ever like um read about you know how god created like the earth right and just everything and because we were talking about something and so that just popped in my mind but this was all holy ghost led i'm gonna just put it there because this was so powerful so i was reading to them right and so i'm in genesis chapter 2 and we get to so it starts at 16 and so 16 says it says the lord god well maybe i'll start at 15 so it says then the lord god took the man and put him into the garden of eden to cultivate to cultivate it and keep it the lord god commanded the man saying from any tree of the garden you may eat freely but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day for in the day that you eat of, eat from it you will surely die and the person asked and they were like well why did god put um the tree of good and evil like why did he put good and evil because god is selling because earlier in it it says like god says like well no not even earlier i mean i guess like in chapter 16 it says the lord god commanded the man saying from any tree of the garden you may freely eat meaning after god is telling you all that's in the garden of eden and you can read because i think it starts from 10 and just go to 14 like god is telling you what's on this side that side and things like that and so then it, god goes on to say but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die so the person was like well why did god put um that the, there basically the tree of good and evil there and i was like i don't i don't know <laughs> necessarily like why you put the tree of good and evil there i was like but i do know god provided everything else so he's given them one command right like you got all these other things like who cares why right but anyways i didn't have the answer and i told them that like i don't know and so we read through it and we don't get to chapter two so i just was reading um everything else and explaining it to him and so then after that right y'all this gets powerful so then i'll say okay well like i gotta go into prayer so i'll be back you know because i make time to pray to the lord so i was like well i gotta go gotta go pray <laughs> so i left and i just started praying to god and stuff like that and then i just it just popped in my head i was like god why did you put the tree of good and evil there like why would you put that there you guys what i'm about to tell you is gonna blow your mind because it blew my mind and so then after um i asked the lord that the lord said to me going back to satan right and he was saying like how satan was in heaven right because god's plans for all of us is good not evil okay and so he was saying based well what the lord has said was that satan right because we know and if you don't i'm better tell you that satan wanted to be like god and because he wanted to be like god right and he was prideful and he felt like oh the people should be worshiping him and he should be in god's position god was just like all right like go and he puts him into the world right and jesus talks about that too like he saw satan fall like or flash fall like lightning in the sky anyways so he gets kicked out of heaven and so now we know from reading the bible that the devil is the lowercase g god of this world okay of this world jesus tells us that his children are in it but they're not of it okay and so now god goes ahead he creates hell for him and the angels right but in the meantime he goes ahead and he created the earth 
for Satan to fall in, right? And kind of rule in, in a sense, right? And so then God was saying, and this is how he told me, he said, you know, like how in school, right? How, like, we'll say, like, the teacher promises, like, a piece of party or something like that. Like, if you guys are good and yada, 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 like, this will be the outcome because God's plans, right? For us, we're all of good, right? But because Satan disobeyed God, he ruined it for the rest, right? He ruined it. But in that, God went ahead and made it so now everybody can choose. You can choose now. This is where free will comes into play. You can serve God or not serve God. But it's your choice. So Satan, God created him. And we read this in Ezekiel, I believe it's 28. And he talks about how he picks the best of these rubies and diamonds and all these things for Satan. And he says, like, he made him perfect, right? And so, but yet, in all the goodness that God provided in the heavens, right? Satan wasn't satisfied. And so, therefore, God was like, fine then. Everybody can pick. You guys, this is powerful. Everybody can pick. And so he actually put the knowledge of good and evil there because that was his idea for redemption. You guys, at the beginning, he already put redemption there. So we can pick. And I'm not saying like, you know, redemption, like, oh, you automatically go to heaven, you automatically go to hell. Like, no, Jesus, of course, you know, paid all of that. But what I'm saying is, like, that was the planting of the building for our um, us being redeemed. Because as we read, right, about the fallen man and we read, like, how Satan convinces Eve, first of all, that you're missing something right because everything was per like perfect okay and so listen to this i'm gonna go to chapter three it says now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said to the woman indeed has god said you shall not eat from the tree of the garden the woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. And the serpent is Satan. And we know that because in Revelations, it tells us. Okay, it says the serpent, the devil. So that's just that. So the serpent is the devil. And then it says, but from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And if you guys actually go back and read chapter two, you will find out like, God may, even before that, no, starting from one, like God creates everything and says it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. He never said it's evil. He said all of it was good. Are you guys catching this? He said it was good. So there was no evil there, none whatsoever. Everything was good, not evil. So they were in the will of God. So when you think about Adam and Eve before eating the apple, that symbolizes them being in the will of God, them being in the plans God has for them, right? That is them being with God because they're in his presence. God walked with them, right? And that's scriptural because it says God walks up to them. But anyways, when he's looking for Adam, right? Because he says, it says, then the Lord let me see, he hit himself. Okay, here it goes. So, 8. So, chapter 2, verses 8. It says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Okay? So, they. this is intimacy. Okay? This is what God has for us to take care of us, to establish everything. And then we just... But you gotta read it, you guys, you gotta read it. Maybe one day I'll go through that, but it's so good. And so, you know, God says, this is good, this is good, this is good. And this is in the will, they're in the will. But what Satan does is, 
Because, and this is also good because they didn't know evil. Because God wanted to protect them from what was evil. That was his plan. To protect them from evil. Like what he does with us. When we're in the will, he protects us. His plan is to protect us from evil. Right? And because Satan wanted to leave God and everything was good in heaven. Well, God's like, now everybody can pick. Whether they want to be with me or not. But the choice is yours. And so listen to this because you guys, this is so good. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so everything is good. So that's them being in the will of God. God taking care of them. The presence of God is there. And you guys, this still goes to us this day. Still our lives this day when we're in the will of God. It's like we're in the Garden of Eden before eating of the evil you know everything is good his plans for us right jeremiah 29 it says it is plans of welfare and not of calamity okay and so that's what that symbolized they're in the will and this is what satan tries to do to all of us do you see how he's trying to convince eve that there's better let me put that there and we're gonna go to first john what is it? Chapter 2, verse 16. Okay. Because this is what he is doing to her. Because before she didn't think anything of it. Everything was good. She was living in the will of God with no problem. None. And so when we get to 16, it says, Oh, well, we should we start at 15 maybe? Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If any love, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, this is powerful. Oh, Jesus. And so he's saying, do not love the world. But what Satan's trying to do is get them to love the world and feel like they're missing something that's in the world because he is the God of the world. So therefore, lowercase g, okay, because we know God is capital, right? So supreme sovereign almighty above satan little baby nothing okay little g and so god is saying well not god but it says do not love the world and so because satan rules the world right and that's scripture he's trying to get them to come into the world and so then it says 16 for all that is in the world now listen to this, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the father, but is from the world. And now if we go back to Genesis, isn't that what, because even in nine, first of all, two, chapter two, verse nine, it says, out of the garden, the Lord God caused to grow every tree and is pleasing to the sight, okay, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so now what is Satan doing? He's opening her eyes, right? Because if we come to... Uh, we'll go to five. It says, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open. You guys, spirits are transferring as he is speaking. Her eyes were closed before. She wasn't worried about none of that before. But now that he, this is why protect your eye gate and your ear gate. Come on, Holy Spirit, protect your eye gate and your ear gate because now he's talking to her. She's getting curious. She's starting to desire these things. And because she has not guarded her eyes and her ears, spirits are transferring. Because listen to this. It says, when the woman saw, meaning her eyes were closed to evil, but he's talking to her and talking to her now. Her eyes are open, right? Lust. Didn't we just read that? Didn't we just read that? Come on, let's go back to John, 1st John, chapter 2, verses, we'll start from 15 again. It says, no, 16, for all that is in the world, he's getting her to what? The, to lust of the flesh, to lust of the eyes, it says, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. Listen, listen. 
Yeah, I am flipping back and forth. Because now she saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise and that the boast of pride. She took from its fruits and ate and she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked before they weren't ashamed in God's presence. They didn't have, you know, insecurities and doubts about themselves. They were whole. They were complete. They didn't have identity crisis. But now that evil has came in, now they feel shame. Now they feel incomplete. Now they feel insecure. Listen to this. And it said, and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves loin coverings. Mm. Not eight. They heard the sound of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You guys. And the man and his wife hid themselves. Now they're hiding from God. Now they feel convicted. Now they feel ashamed. Now they feel guilty. These spirits weren't there before. Hang around Satan long enough, he'll make you feel like you're not worthy to be in the presence of God. Doesn't he do that? Even now, in these times, in this day, same tactic, same trick from the beginning in Genesis, which was thousands of now when we do God wrong, we run and we hide. Well, not me anymore. I rebuke. Now, I rebuke that. Denounce that. Renounce that. Now I run to the presence of God. God made it very clear about his relationship with David. How whenever David would sin, he would always run to God. He would repent. He wouldn't run from God, but to God. But listen to this. It says, run, it says, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Mm. Mm. But you guys, it gets good, right? Because God already planted, you know, with the option of us, you know, good and evil. Because evil had entered, right? As soon as God kicked Satan out, evil had already entered into the world. It was already here. <sighs> Come on, it was already here. So God took what Satan was trying to use, right? Because he deceived one third of the angels. So he already took the evil, right? And decided to give the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because this was his beginning plan to win back his people. Now, you guys, we're going to skip down because I don't want to make this too long. We're going to go to 15. Yes. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Okay. And it says the Lord God said to the serpent. Okay. So let's go to 14. The Lord said, the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you more than the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go. And dust you will eat. That's even powerful because man was made from dust. But now you, you beneath the feet, right? Mm. Whew. And dust you will eat all the days of your life. So God had told me a long time ago when, you know, he was pulling me in and things like that. And he said, this became his purpose. This became the purpose of the serpent. And you notice how it didn't say the serpent was on a rock. So we don't know if he was flying. If We don't know anything. But this is when his, and this became his purpose. This became his purpose, right? And now he is cursed. And then it says, and I will put, so this is what, God is saying to Satan, right? The Lord God said to the serpent, Satan. Now, 15. Then he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. <clears throat> mm. Come on, why? Because Jesus is coming from the woman. And between your seed and her seed, mm, he shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. Come on, and between your seed, he already, 
ascending Jesus back. You guys, are you seeing this in the beginning? We're only in chapter 3 in Genesis. Like, here he goes, God. Oh, like, this is truly Romans 8, 28. Like, God turns all things for our good. Mm, for those who are called according to his purpose and love him. For those who love him. Come on, you guys. This is good stuff. And because your seed... In between your seed and her seed, he's talking about Jesus, and he shall bruise you on the head, mm, and you shall bruise him on the heel. Hallelujah. And God also is telling me, like, even New Testament, around the time where Jesus is getting ready to be born, and how, like, he wants to kill all the sons and the deliverers. Why is he wanted to kill the sons with um, Moses as well? Why? Come on. Come on. Between you and the woman the woman the woman who's gonna have the babies of the deliverers talk about it but we're talking about jesus right now but even satan was trying to kill mary's son no he didn't know it was jesus but he wanted to kill all the sons right not that he ever found him because God was protecting his promise to us that he gave to us in Genesis. <laughs> like, man, like, ugh. help you, Jesus. Like, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, like, the beginning and the end. How is God not God? Like, God, and I'm talking God. Jehovah, right? Yahweh, like talking Jesus, Lord. I'm talking Holy Spirit. Like I'm not talking about no other God, right? Yeah, this is powerful. This is powerful. This is powerful. What Satan thought he was doing by getting her to eat. Like this even takes me to the scripture. Lord, what am I thinking? Second uh, Chronicles. Let me put this bookmark here. Second Chronicles. Okay. Okay, chapter two. Oh, I was already here. Okay, and where is the chapter two? No, it's chapter. It is this. Is it perishing? The word of God, four and four. Okay, it's blinded the eyes. And let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's start from chapter 4, verse, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this mystery, I mean this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness, and adult adulterating the word of god by but by the manifestation of truth commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god and even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing in whose case the god this lowercase g of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So there goes to show us was how God is lowercase and how he says God of this world, which is Satan. So that goes to say that. That goes to say that. And then, let me go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and listen to this. Because this gets good. Now, it's 6. Yet we do not, it says, yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Satan thought he was doing something by in, um, introducing Eve to evil, right? And Adam, listen to this. And then it says, eight. 
the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And then it goes on to say, number nine, but just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ears has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. And you guys, if you read in the beginning too, I'm going to read this and it says, well, chapter, I mean, two verses 10, it says, for to us, God revealed them through the spirit for the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Come on, Holy Spirit. But the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with the spiritual word. Words, 14. But a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of God. Which is why you must be born again right of God for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised 15 but he who is spiritual appraises all things yet he himself is appraised by no one for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will not instruct him but we have the mind of Christ and now I'm going to go back to Genesis and 1 verses verse 1 and we're going to read two. Well, we'll start from one. In the beginning, right? God created the heavens and the earth. Listen to this. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. So God already lets us know that His Spirit was already there. And then look, all these things that happen. And two, you guys just know, like you were saying, like, you know, like even the rulers of these ages don't know what God is doing. When it came to Jesus Christ and even in the beginning, Satan was actually again proving that God is God, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, God of all gods, because he already set in motion everything for our redemption to redeem us to bring us back to him to let us choose whether we want him or not not forcing us to be in heaven not even satan satan wanted to go even though he had everything in the presence of god but such a hater he is right because when pride comes it all comes to where he went and deceived one third of the angels and using the same tactic of influence taking so many people to hell with him for the bible said to get to heaven it is a narrow road all right you guys so that is all that the lord had gave me and blew my mind it was so beautiful i said god i have to make this video and by the grace of god i was able to i just wanted to share that because it has blessed me and i know it'll bless y'all who always wonder like why is there evil because of satan you know but also because it was the beginning of god's plan to get us back as we see two things he was already doing in the beginning in the beginning one before satan did what he was gonna do and then after satan did what he did y'all this is beautiful and you notice how everything was good there was no evil but satan kept trying to get her adam and eve and eve is her okay we don't do none of that adam is he eve is her and um and yeah he just kept trying to introduce evil 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 and that is why we are suff you know have suffering in the earth today broken hearts poverty generational curses all these evil things it was never god's intent we were supposed to be in heaven, right? His his plan for, for us was always of welfare. 
an expected end, hope in a future, never of calamity, never of hurt and pain, never of sorrow. That's why when we return back up to heaven, it won't be none of that. It won't be none of that. It won't be none of that. So if you guys want to get mad at the person who ruins the party for everything, like the children or the child at school, the student at school, the analogy the Lord gave me, then you know to be mad at Satan because God's plan was for all of us to be in heaven with him. Okay? All right, you guys. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Bye.